All right, so today's topic, part one of YouTube. YouTube, another social network. It has the various features of uh, the other social networks, which are uh, accounts or AKA profiles or pages. It has likes, it has comments, it has shares, it has follows. Well, that sounds exactly like every other network. I can like your stuff on Twitter. I can comment on your uh, posts on Instagram. I can follow you on Snapchat. So all of those things are, are exactly the same in this network with the other networks. The USP, anyone remember what USP stands for? Selling unique selling proposition. So the unique selling proposition is that it's focused on video. <clears throat> Position. What's unique about it is video. Well, it's not so unique anymore. You can put video on Twitter, you can put video on Facebook, you can put video on all of these networks, right? So it's not as unique anymore. We'll cover other unique aspects of it when we actually get to the network uh, next time, but I'll say as a little preview, video is either pre-recorded or live. And we'll cover what that means next time. So in order to use YouTube, you need video. So to get the best or the most out of YouTube, you need a video. What topic, what length, how professional, all of these questions vary and there's no right answer. Um, true or false? You can upload a video to YouTube that is one hour long. True. Will people watch it? That's the question there. There used to be a limit that you could uh, only upload up to 10 minutes long videos. Then um, they, they revolutionized it by making it 15 minutes. And then eventually they said, okay, no limit. I have seen people upload videos that are 24 hours long, but those are like pictures of an aquarium, you know, all day long, or videos of an aquarium. So length is, quote, any length, but based on your audience. Your audience is the one that's going to determine the length of your video. Uh, I've worked with YouTube for personal and for businesses, and um, it really varies. Some, some YouTube videos are like little commercials, 45 seconds long, advertising the client's stuff. Um, others are um, informational tutorial video videos, 15 minutes long. So it depends on, um, on your audience. Same thing with the topic any topic but based on your audience. I'll take the sign-in sheet here now. It already went everywhere. So um, your audience also determines uh, what your videos would be about. But I'll give some guidance uh, in part two of the class, or uh, day two of the class. And then professional, again. Uh, this one, however, I'll say, I would say, probably the most professional you can create, but based on your audience. There are YouTube videos that get famous, aka going viral, that are completely low quality, shot on a phone, really shaky and vertically. And those get famous and they get millions of views and they get internet famous for a little while. And there are videos that are professionally shot with five people on real cameras and microphones and lights and all of that. So everywhere in between is how professional you're going to make your video. But again, it depends on your audience. You might not need to create a very complex, professional-looking video if your audience doesn't really warrant it. And some of these things you might not be able to answer until you've used YouTube for a little while or tried to create content for YouTube for a little while and then see how it works. So any answer 
is best made after checking your insights, aka um, analytics, aka data, aka stats. YouTube and most of these networks give you a lot of stats. What was my most popular video? Uh, what were my demographics, <clears throat> male, female, from Canada, etc. Um, how long did people watch my video? Maybe I'm uploading 10 minute long videos, but my insights tell me uh, people stop paying attention after four minutes. So that might tell me I need to focus on videos that are four minutes long so that people watch 100% of it. Or maybe I'll stay with 10 minute long videos but put the most important stuff in the first four minutes. So this is um, going to be a very important aspect to look at things, uh, the, the statistics, the data on your channel. YouTube calls it a channel. Other names on other networks, page, profile, what other names? There's channel, page, profile, account. YouTube says you've got a subscriber, aka follower, or, uh, or the other names that uh, the other networks might call it. So we'll cover more details about the nuts and bolts of YouTube, but here's the, the big idea. You need video. We can have different kinds of video. Lengths and topics and all of that will make more sense as we, as we use it. And, and all of that, but today we'll be more hands-on in actually creating video. Um, any questions so far on anything about YouTube? <coughs> How do you get an audience? How do you get an audience? So that'll be the next uh, class after we have something to put up on YouTube. So then today's focus, video creation. So how many of you have a video camera? Trick question, if you've got a phone, you've got a video camera. Uh, so I don't mean a, you know, a classic Sony uh, one that you put over your shoulder and all of that, back in the old days. Uh, so everyone has the potential to create video content. How professional it is and all of that, that is not something I can teach exactly because it's going to depend on your topic, your audience, and all of that. I can teach the nuts and bolts of how to um, edit a video and such, but we, we don't have time about how to create your perfect video. I can talk about how to uh, edit the video. So there's uh, phases of video pre-production, production, post-production, produ pre-production. Planning your video production. Recording your video post. Uh, editing your video. So let's say I want to use YouTube to create commercials for my business. Let's say I want to use YouTube to create video tutorials about my products for my business. Maybe I have, you know, maybe I sell baby cribs and I want to have videos showing you how to assemble them. Um, maybe I'm a web designer and I want to have tutorials on how to install WordPress. Uh, maybe I have you know a car dealership and and I want to have testimonials of people saying how great my service was. The 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 topic of the video we, we won't cop we won't cover it just yet today but that's part of pre-production, planning your video. What's, <coughs> what's the idea? What's the idea? Do you have the um, location to, to record? Actors? 
goal of your video. So in a big Hollywood movie, they have all of these phases, and they are there's a lot of sub uh, steps in all of these steps. They need the director, they need the writer, they need to find where they're going to shoot everything. They have to have the actors, the script, all of that planning. Sometimes they even do storyboards. Do you know what a storyboard is? What is a storyboard? That's where you have the board depicting the setup and the movement of the characters. Series of pictures uh, that shows the lighting, the movement, the shots of the video. So it's drawings. Um, what's classic is that people have, um, you know, the, the post-it notes, and then they have a little drawing. I expect to have a photo of the actress close up. Then another post-it. Then I want to have a, a, a video, a shot of it wide to see everyone in the in the video. Then I want the camera to change to the beach. So it's a series of pictures that detail visually what the story is, because the story comes from a script, and then a uh, storyboard can then visualize it, and then you record it, because it's very expensive to make a Hollywood movie, millions of dollars, hundreds of millions. And so you don't want to waste time about where do we put the camera, where are the actors, what are they going to say? It's all planned. For us, we don't have to go that deeply, of course, but what I've experienced, uh, as I've said before, I teach this stuff, but I also do this for clients. Uh, I've experienced both aspects of planning a project very well to record their videos and then being a little bit more um, cinema verite about it, and they both uh, have their pros and cons. Uh, are you going to plan your videos deeply or not so deeply? And I've had good experiences too where we just show up to the client's place, we bring our cameras and stuff, we record, and then after the fact, in the post-production, that's when we figure out what kind of video we're creating. It doesn't always work that way. Uh, like, you might think, I wish I had recorded this. Now that I'm editing my video, I wish I had gotten that, that, that shot or that person talking or this angle. So with pre-production, it might help you to really plan what you want to record and how you're going to to set it up. Production is actually recording using cameras and or microphones to, to capture everything. So that's the part we cannot really do in class. Uh, we've all got cell phones and all of that, but you know, we're not really set up to record any, anything. I have a video for you that I recorded last night that we can use, so we can jump into the post-production aspect of it. So, enhancing the video. Part of this process is, one of the, one of the things to do in this step is enhancing the video. For example, fix it that it's too dark. Sound is too soft. To some degree, I can brighten up the video. Now, it's not going to work that if I'm in, uh, you know, pitch black darkness, that I click a few buttons and suddenly it's perfect lighting. That's not going to work that way. But if things are a little bit dark, I will be able to use the video software to brighten things up a bit. If the sound was a little too soft, I can use the thing to raise the sound. But if a person is whispering, you're not going to be able to really raise it up to be, you know, uh, really loud. There are limitations to all of this, to all of this video editing. That's why planning it and then recording it properly is very important because afterward you won't be able to fix everything about it, but many things, such as removing mistakes. Maybe you were recording the product a video about um, putting your product together. And at a certain point, uh, you made a connection between this rod and this other connection wrong. Uh, well, I need to remove that. Actually, this needed to connect with this. So you'll be able to edit out and remove pieces of the video. You'll be able to change the sequence.
maybe I first recorded step one, and then I recorded step three, and I realized I needed to then record step two. Well, I recorded all of those pieces. I can then organize those different shots in post-production. Add text. So maybe you need text to appear below a person's face or explanatory text to appear on screen. We can do that in post-production. Add music. So music uh, is, a, is a great way to also create a, a feeling uh, or a style in the videos. If you have like scary foreboding music in your tutorial, that's going to make people anxious. Why, why do I feel bad or anxious about you know, putting their product together? Or calm, pleasant music, on the other hand, could uh, soothe people as they do a difficult task. So all of this post-production happens in a video editing software. Has anyone heard of any video editing software out there? Such as? Final Cut Pro, Vegas, anything else? iMovie, great. Premiere. I always misspell it. Windows Movie Maker. So there's, there's lots of software out there. Uh, that can uh, be used to edit video in the range in price from free to not free and so for example iMovie free Windows Movie Maker free but discontinued Vegas Final Cut Pro and all of those not free <coughs> usually they cost a little bit <coughs> To have any good uh, video editing, usually it's kind of expensive. Uh, so um, I forgot which one it was, but uh, I finally saw the movie Deadpool a few days ago. And at the very end, because I watched the credits, at the very end it did say, I believe it said, made with uh, Adobe Premiere Pro. So this software that I'm talking about here is used to make big, famous Hollywood movies. Or small things like ours as well. It just depends on your budget. Now, what I'm going to recommend... Recommendation... Adobe Premiere... Elements. Adobe Premiere... is... Uh, nowadays it's CC, uh, but Adobe Premiere is the. Is that how you spell Premiere? Premiere. Premiere. Adobe Premiere CC is the big, famous, expensive software, but it's very complex. Premiere Elements is like the little brother, and it's much more user friendly. And whereas Premiere is part of the whole Adobe suite, which is like. $40 per month, something like that. Maybe student price is cheaper, but still that's going to be like, you know, $15 a month, something like that. 19. 19, so 19 times 12 months is more than $200. So um, a subscription to the software, ongoing fee, um, approximately those prices, 19 to $40 per month. Premiere is a one-time cost between $79 and $99, one-time cost. Regular price is $99, but they often have sales for it at, I've seen it at Fry's Electronics, I've seen it at Target, I've seen it at um, Costco, for $79. And iMovie and Windows Movie Maker are both free uh, consumer versions. They're, they're very easy to use, iMovie and Movie Maker. 
uh, Premiere, putting it in the order like this, is a little harder to use. And then Final Cut and Vegas and all of that are much harder to use. So these are hard. This is medium. These are easy. But you can get very good results from the easy, free ones, too. It's unfortunate, however, that Movie Maker is discontinued. You can't even download it anymore. We have it on these computers, but I'm going to focus on software that you can still get, which is Premiere Elements. We don't have iMovie here, because iMovie works on the Mac. These are Windows computers. And so we're going to focus on uh, Adobe Premiere Elements. We have both the big professional Adobe Premiere and Premiere Elements. And um, you get a lot more features on Premiere Pro than Elements, but I think that if you're not, if you've never had experience in video editing, um, Premiere Elements is going to work very well. And even if you do like it and want to continue to work with video editing, I would still think about sticking with elements. It, it has everything that you need to do, even complex things like green screens and, and like uh, image masks and stuff. Um, even though it's the little brother, it's still very full featured compared to this one. It's just that this has even more features that you'll probably never use. So we're going to work with uh, Premiere Elements today. We're going to work with a video that I've already got recorded. And the goal is, OK, we've got this raw video. I want to go in, and if I need to, fix you know, the colors, brighten it up, fix the sound, maybe remove mistakes, add text, add music, all of those things that you would normally do with, with any sort of video. We'll have that experience today. Any questions on, on the topic so far? Yes? Can we, uh, sometimes there are people in your video who can't show their faces. Can you add like, smiley faces to on top of their faces? <coughs> Superimpose. I believe you can. Yes, you will be able to put about fuzzing out, I'm not exactly sure about that, but I'm, I know that you can put like a happy face on people's face to cover them that way. Uh, we can check, uh, but yes, uh, that that should be a way to obscure people's identities. In elements, <coughs> elements, the cheap one. Okay, probably, yeah. Mm -hmm. Victor, do you have any recommendations uh, for the? cameras, the microphones, the recording equipment. I know it deals basically on price. But. Mm -hmm. Let's make a few notes on that. So uh, during production, OK, using cameras and microphones, uh, there, there's such a range. Um, any of the, what, what they would call prosumer cameras should work. Uh, those are the ones like, you know, those little Sony cameras or a Canon camera, any of those which range from, what, like $200 to $600. Those are going to be what I would say the high-end ones uh, because you can get cameras that are $2,000, $10,000. Um, anything around that sort of range should work very well. If you want to get very professional, a um, an external microphone. One of the things that ruins video is the audio of it. If I have a really great camera and I'm set up here and my subject is standing at that wall over there, uh, and they're talking in their normal voice, which is like this, it's not going to transfer from where they're standing to the microphone on my camera, and it'll sound terrible. And when I try to enhance it in the video editor, it won't enhance it as much as you would think. So an external microphone would be one that they're holding on to while they're standing over there, and their voice is being recorded. And then uh, that microphone uh, is capturing the audio, which can then be synchronized with the video. Um, that could be what you would call a lapel microphone or a lav 
mic, lavalier microphone, which is one those that the newscasters use, those little clip-on microphones. That little microphone clips onto the shirt, it records the audio. You can have wired or wireless that it then connects to the camera, so the voice is perfectly captured, even though your camera is far away. And uh, those, those are usually what I would recommend for this, and these are very affordable, I would say, between like uh, 25 to $45. But for any of these, a big recommendation that I would say is a tripod. If you're using uh, one of these mobile phones, they claim that, yeah, brand new image stabilization technology. Uh, so meaning that if you're, if you're consciously standing still here, it will try to fix some of the shaking that naturally happens in our hands. If you're kind of walking around in this like that, that's not going to stabilize it very well. So uh, a tripod is uh, going to be very useful to make sure your, your image is, is rock solid. And you can buy adapters for your phone, because you know, the, uh, a classic tripod, it screws onto your, your camera. Well, the phones don't have that. You can buy an adapter, a universal adapter that grabs onto your phone, and then that attaches to the tripod, and then you have your phone on a tripod perfectly stable. And these range in price all over the place. Uh, some of the cheap ones. I wouldn't go for the cheap ones. They're still wobbly. So I would say a good one, $50 and up. So just some basic concepts right there. Or again, if you don't want to be that professional, I can do this. I'm going to get my, my camera. I'm going to put it right here. There we go. I'm going to record. Now that doesn't have as much leeway as a, a real tripod and such, but uh, you know, some people have phones that have a little kickstand on it too, and then you can put your phone there and set yourself up and record. And oftentimes you can flip the camera around and record yourself that way too. You can hold it this way and talk about it that way too. So the uh, it's really based on budgets. What might be good here? Got these little ones that mm -hmm. we've got that somehow bend and, and lock on things so they're, they're a little more stable. Yeah, I like those. Uh, yeah, those, uh, is that from a uh, Gorilla Pod, I think? Is that the manufacturer on that one? Looks like it, but that's really cool because it's got little arms that you can then have it attached to uh, the wall or on the um, on the table. You can have it wrap around things, and then the, it's got a ball head so it can a angle itself anywhere. Yeah, and that was probably not that probably not that pricey at all, was it? It actually came with the camera. Oh wow! Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. There's that. Okay, any other questions here before we get hands-on? All right, so here's what we need to do to set ourselves up. I have a video that I prepared yesterday that I'm going to give you so that then we can um, do a little video editing. If you uh, minimize all your windows, we'll go to the network folder. So minimize everything and go to computer window. Top left corner, double click on computer. Then we will have our network location, double click classroom data. Then you'll see a folder, Campo Social 3. Inside of that is a video. Let's copy the whole folder, not just the video, but copy the whole folder, Campo Social 3. Copy it either to your desktop or your flash drive. If you want to keep anything we're about to create, uh, you want it on your flash drive. If you didn't bring a flash drive, just copy it to the desktop. Copy the whole folder, not just the video inside, but the whole folder. It's a big file, so first of all, you'll notice that it's 50 megabytes, 50. This is a video. Um, yes. Sorry, this MP4 format is that like the old MP3 or? Is that it's different. It's it's newer. So uh, video formats. Let me mention here briefly. Post production MP4 is the common uh, common video format nowadays. Anything else like MP3? That's usually audio. There's MOV, AVI. Those are kind of old. MP4 is like the modern one. Can you still use those? Yeah, a bunch. Uh, have yeah. Old videos. 
Yeah, you can still use the, the classic formats. This is the modern format nowadays, but these video editors can still um, work with the old formats. So this, this video is a minute and 39 seconds. It's about 50 megabytes um, video compared to pictures and text and sound is often a lot bigger, a lot bigger file size, so it's slower to upload and download because it includes, you know, a video is, is a set of, of, of still images, 24 of them per second or 30 of them per second. In one second, 30 photos are displayed sequentially. That's how video works. It's just a series of of, of photos. It's like a flipbook. You ever played with a flipbook that you flip it like that and then a little dog is jumping? Well, that's that's a video. It's a sequence of still shots. This at only one and a half minutes is 50 megabytes, so it, it adds up. I've worked with videos that, you know, when they're like 10 minutes long and such, you're getting to one gigabyte. So that's a lot of, 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 of storage space used up. And then you have to upload it. And if you ever download any big files, well, uploading is also is also going to be a little bit of a wait. So everyone should have a copy of that of that video. And what we're going to do then is start our video editing software. So go to your Start menu down here, uh, and then start searching for Premiere. So search their keyword Premiere. It should pop up with Premiere Elements or Premiere Pro. We want Elements, Premiere Elements 14. Click on that. <coughs> so start Adobe Premiere Elements. So Premiere Elements has um, a lot of great features for beginners, and then you can do a lot of great things for advanced users. In, for the clients that I've worked with, in the beginning, we used iMovie and Movie Maker very well. It was able to do what we needed, which was to remove mistakes, add music, etc. So if you've got iMovie or Movie Maker on your home computer, it's very good software. But eventually, we, we, we got to its limitations in that we couldn't do very complex edits or some advanced features and such. So uh, we've moved on to Premiere Elements. And uh, I like it a lot. And it's a lot more powerful. And I have uh, a Adobe Premiere Pro, uh, but I just haven't really learned it because the interface is different and it's got more features and such. So uh, we've made projects for clients with Elements, and it works very well. Uh, there's also Adobe Premiere. Uh, there's also Adobe Photoshop Elements, which is like uh, Photoshop Junior. Uh, that's also a separate price of seventy-nine to ninety-nine dollars. But I often see that they're sold bundled together for about one hundred and fifty dollars. Instead of getting them ninety-nine dollars separately, they're about one fifty. Um, so when we first get to this little welcome screen, oh look, there's yet another sale for Adobe Elements 2018. So we've got Adobe Elements 14, and now there's 2018. OK, that's nice. But what we see here then is uh, we have a video editor, organizer, photo editor. Let's um, just click on the icon video editor right there. Not the triangle, just the icon. So click on that. That's going to load the main software. OK, so the interface here uh, is very nice in that it promotes itself about, here's a little tutorial on how to do this. And here's uh, a tutorial on how to do that. 
So this is very consumer friendly in that it gives you all of these like little videos and articles on how to do all of this great stuff. How do I do a close up onto this video? How do I add sound? All of that is found over here under the eLive view. So if you if you have some time and then get uh, curious and want to do video editing, uh, Adobe's tutorials are very good teaching you how to use the software to do great uh, great things. There's a quick editor in that you combine your stuff together and it says, okay, put your main video here, put your text here, record narration, add audio. Okay, that one's really useful. There's also guided in that it says, here's what I want to do. I want to remove parts of my video, so guide me through that. And there's a bunch of step-by-step -step tutorials there. Adjusting the color. I recorded my video and it was a little too... The color was wrong, I want to fix it. How do I do that? It shows you here. I want to add text, again it shows you. The difference between guided and eLive is that this will have you actually do it, whereas eLive is more like things that you read and then you apply them. <coughs> well, we're experts, so we're going to go to expert. Now it doesn't sound as complex as, as all that, but we're going to jump into expert because I think even as a beginner uh, consumer product, or uh, us as beginners here, I think this is really not that complex, even though it sounds like expert, and I'll guide us through it. So, let's make sure we're in the expert view. What we see on an interface here is what, what these are called tracks. Audio track, uh, voice track, music track. In my case, because my screen is different, I have to scroll up here. And then I see these different things here. Audio track one, video track one, video track two, three, etc. Well, a track is what does it contain? The visuals will be here. The uh, the music of the project will be here. So it's in a different track. In video editing, your different elements are in a track. When you use iMovie and Movie Maker, there is a limit to the number of tracks it can support. So this is one of the reasons why we moved over to Elements, Premiere Elements, because it gives you basically unlimited tracks and you can really combine your videos very, very powerfully. At the bottom here we have our favorite Undo and Redo. In case we make a mistake, take it back. It's easy. What we're going to be working with is technically called non-destructive video editing. A really fancy way of saying that your original videos are not altered. So we'll work with non-destructive video editing software. Your original audio video is not altered. In the old days, when I first started to dabble with this stuff in the 90s, it was destructive, so you had to make a copy of your file before editing it, or else your original file got edited and there's no way to bring back that which you removed. And nowadays, uh, that's not an issue at all, that you can always go back to your original video and, and edit it again. All of the original content is still there. At the bottom we have various tools. If you click that to open it up, I want to do a freeze frame. So let's say you've got video happening and then you pause it right there for five seconds. That's a freeze frame. You've got motion tracking. Follow objects in your footage and attach cool graphics. So this is the example where we can attach maybe a blurry um, spot on a person's face and as they move around the blur follows them. Or we put a happy face on them and that happy face follows them as they move. Motion tracking. Uh, favorite moment, don't worry about that. Movie menu, don't worry about that. If you're making a DVD or a Blu-ray, don't worry about it. Pan and zoom. So 
we have for photo or for video, we can zoom into a portion, zoom out, and move around the camera. Even though I put my camera on a tripod right here and the person was standing there the whole time, I can still do pan and zoom in that I can still zoom in and zoom out even though I didn't physically move my camera. Now it's not perfect because it has to do it via you know, a, an algorithm or uh, the software. It is better to actually move the camera, that's higher quality, but there is a way to uh, zoom in, zoom out. We can trim elements, remove things. We can do time remapping, so speed up or slow down the video, even reverse it. So something you recorded something being put into some place, actually you need it to be taken out so you could have it reversed that the video goes backwards. So you have various quick tools here for video and for audio. Oops. Video and audio right here. You can do different things. Um, have it automatically try to make the volume correct or you manually change the audio, etc. So some video and audio tools. Transitions. You see this all the time in movies. A shot is at, at the farm and another shot at the beach. Well, instead of them suddenly appearing, you can have them fade between each other. Or you can have it like uh, everything fade out to black for a moment and then it fades back into the other shot. Or, you know, they transition in different ways, video or audio. So in animation that happens between shots. We have then the ability to add uh, titles and text. We can add text. And then over here you have more options. So. <coughs> You can add text onto the screen in a variety of interesting or creative ways. There's a lot there to explore. That one is from the little menu up on top here. Right now I'm looking at a certain thing. If you click on that, there's more possible types of texts. Mm -hmm. We have effects that we can do. We can make our, uh, our video look you know, very stark black and white. You can uh, change the, the colors in different ways. So a lot of these screens, this is the, the expert view. So you see a lot of things, but then there's also a lot of sub things or, or hidden things, often in a little triangle. So I'm looking at a few kinds of effects. And then what I mean is you can click here, you get even more effects, pixelate it, uh, merge the video, distort it under distortion so I can make it look like it's twirling. So you have all of these possible video and audio changes. Regarding music, we've got these other <coughs> some graphics. So there we go, angry face, butterfly. Put that on the on the screen, have it follow the person's face, etc. So we've got all of these abilities to quickly uh, enhance or alter our videos. On the right side we've got other things as well, further adjustments. Now we don't have a clip, we don't have any video to actually adjust, but here I would also have the ability to brighten up the, the footage, uh, fix, the, fix the colors, etc. Other effects here. So we've got ways to adjust the, the, the video on the right, at the bottom, and then over here it's kind of guiding you. Well, before you do anything you have to add media, which is audio, video, whatever. You could create a project based on a template. You could then add text, or known as titles, or uh, learn even more about what do all of these buttons mean and, and what else do I do with it. Well, if we want to work with any of this, we need to have our video. That video that I gave you a copy of, we need to add it into our project. So we've got up here, Add Media. On the top left corner, if I plug in my camera, I can grab the video right off of my camera. If I've got a web camera, I can turn on the web camera right now and record. And then other ways to grab the video. Well, we've got files that are in a folder. 
So if you copied my folder with my video, this is what we want here. We want to get a video uh, from the computer. So click on Add Media, and then click on Files and Folders. That'll give us our pop-up right here. And go find your folder where your uh, where you got your where you got a copy of my video. And inside of there, you'll see a file called win with the date .mp4. That's the file. That's the video I recorded yesterday. And we want to uh, we want to bring it into our project. This is technically known as ingesting video, but we just want to bring it into our project. So go ahead and click on that and click open. Uh, notice actually here before I do that supported media. This can let you open up just about any kind of video or, or audio. So there's some QuickTime formats, audio MP3 formats, um, JPEG graphics, so this is AVI. So this will let you open up just about any kind of graphic. So click to select that file and then open. You're trying to import a file from a DVD, please use video importer. Uh, huh, okay. Just click Video Importer. Did you get that too? No. I did. I did. You did? Okay. Uh, let's see what happens here. Mine is still thinking. Ooh. Okay, so we're seeing that interesting. Uh, hmm. That's interesting. Okay, I wasn't expecting that, but if you got this screen that looks like mine here, then you only want to select the video in question, and then you get media. So let me pause there. Did, was everyone able to get the video? Anyone having any weirdness, trouble? Yes. Just a 
seems that slightly different things happen for different people that's okay if it didn't look exactly the same let me know now I got this pop-up here I'll just click no uh, for for some of you you might have gotten the video copy here and here if you um, didn't see it here don't worry about it I'll cover that in just one moment but at the very least now a new window appeared up here under project assets this project has one asset it has this one video. This can store then multiple videos and audio and text and photos and everything. So that project assets window has all of your assets. In my case, it also put a copy of it down here in what you would call the timeline, which shows which shows down here. So if you don't see it here, don't worry about it just yet. Let's do this. We've done a lot of hard work so far, but we haven't saved it. If the computer crashes, you're going to lose everything. So let's go up to the file menu. And we'll select Save As. File, Save As. What this is going to do is it's going to want to save a file called whatever.prle. This is the Adobe Premiere Elements project. This file right here is the one that keeps track of all of the changes you've made. That's how you can undo and redo, and this is how your original video is not altered. So this file, I want to save it in the same folder where my video is at. Uh, a lot of you have it on the desktop, so go find your, your desktop uh, where your uh, folder is, the folder that you copied, and we're going to save into that folder this project which I'll just call we'll call um, Victor video so we're saving this Prel file this premiere elements file in the same folder where your video is at you might not see your video there that's fine but make sure it's the same folder call it whatever and then save Under our desktop at this point, right? Possibly. If you copied it to the desktop, it would be on your desktop. Yeah. So on my flash drive, I saved I saved this to my flash drive. I've got the original video, and then I've got the Prel file right there. Okay, so if you don't have your your video in the timeline like this. Let me show you what you need to do. If you do have the video in the timeline, just wait a moment. I've got a project in my assets, but to actually work with it, to edit it, to do anything with it, it's got to be on my timeline. And you might have seen a little pop-up that happened a moment ago. It's going to automatically save itself every few moments after you've saved it the first time. But anyway, I need to put my video into the timeline to actually work with it. So just, if you don't have it here already, drag it from the assets. Just drag it here so that it falls on top of the video track right there. Just click it and drag it. See right here, I can see it. Just drop it right there so that it's at the beginning. Right there. Put that video down to video one. Video one, yeah. It has a message that click no on that if you get a pop-up about solid colors or something just click no 
Okay, so then what we see here is two tracks, video track, audio track. They're linked together, there's my video. I can see here the visuals of it, the beginning and ending of it. Then I see here a bunch of little mountains. What's this about? That's my voice. That's what I had said in the video. So wherever there's a little peaks and stuff, that's me talking. Where there's nothing, it's silent. So you get a visual representation of the audio, and then there's the visuals. The, my video is, is this total right here now. Now, if you don't have headphones, that's, that's fine. Uh, I don't think I have audio on mine either. But you see there's a play button right here, right below the preview of my video. There's a couple of buttons, fast forward, rewind. Those should be somewhat familiar. There's a play button right there. If you press play, well, then it plays. Hello, and welcome to the Tech Review Tuesday. I can pause it. I'm Victor. This is the show where I review some... So As it's playing, cool, every do you see Tuesday. this playhead? This week what I've got for you is the Motorola G5. And so this is a great smartphone with very powerful... The, um... As I press features. play, the playhead moves. So let's check it out. And also my, my time. The case my time is a, an aluminum, seconds, magnesium, down to the uh, metal, which second. really resists so scratches. So I can go to the specific, exact, perfect it's part of my video. Dual. You can drag this playhead. Try this. Click and drag that playhead, and then you see you can fast forward, you can rewind, you can move it to the part of the video, like over here. Verizon. There's a part here where I pause. I'm thinking of what else to say. I'm not saying anything. I'm not doing anything. It's empty. I might want to remove that. This phone is highly recommended so because it has all of the features like video that editing software is to, uh, remove to remove mistakes, to uh, add Twitter, text, add Facebook, sound, etc. Um, and we have the ability with all of these different tools here. And we're not going to cover every tool, but we'll, we'll cover the important <coughs> ones. We'll cover the important ones. So, does that make sense here? Use the playhead to move to different parts of the video. Now, in my case also, I, I see it like that, that wide. You may have it wider. That's because we can zoom in and zoom out. There's a little zoom slider right here. Zoom out to see less of it zoom in to see more of it because I can zoom in down to like the exact word that I'm saying so if you click the that zoom in icon you see it right there on the right side zoom out zoom in try that click it several times see how it keeps going to the right and it's zooming me in so that I see like every individual every individual word what's the benefit of that Sometimes you need to zoom in very close to know what to select to cut out. Uh, I said I repeated the same word twice. So when I show you about cutting it, um, we will be able to zoom in to see because I can see right here this this little peak from here to here is me saying one word basically. So I can see the one word. When I'm zoomed out a lot farther, it all blends together and I can't really see it or select it. You can go in really far in like that, and then you can see when I'm starting to say the word. See how it lines up with the video? I'm starting to open my mouth, and then I say the word. So whatever zoom you, you would like is fine, but maybe I'll zoom in somewhere in the middle here. Now I thought I had sound in this. Slideshows with no pictures? Still pictures is my with guess. still pictures, yeah. <clears throat> There's an option somewhere here in Quick, I think, that you'll you can load up pictures to make a slideshow. Now, for some reason, I don't have sound, but I thought I had sound. OK. 
Okay, well, I guess that's okay. Um, so here's the things that, we're gonna take a break in a moment, but here are the things, here's the whole point. We, um, we have the ability to, uh, for at the very minimum, like uh, remove things. Now I'm gonna close the project uh, assets window because it kind of blocks my view. Uh, I think your monitor is larger, so I'm gonna close it just because it gets in my way. But um, for example, if I zoom in a little bit, I see that for approximately the first two seconds or so, there's no sound. That might be something I want to remove, but don't equate that when there's no sound, it's something that is not important. Sometimes you, you, you will not say anything, but you will be showing something. So I might say, everyone, look at this amazing product. You know, I don't have to say anything more. I'm looking at it. So just because there's no sound doesn't mean it's a mistake or something to be removed. But looking at my own video right here, you know, I am pausing, I am thinking of what to say, and then I start to speak. So at a certain point, yeah, it's two seconds of nothing, and in you know a short attention span culture, why am I looking at something for two seconds with nothing happening? So I do want to cut out maybe one second of nothing. So the way you would do this is you move the playhead somewhere, like maybe right here, 1.00. So there's, a, there's one second into the video, one second. So don't eyeball it here, it tells you right there. There's one second here that I don't want. There must be some way that I can cut out uh, that silence that I don't want. Scissors. So there's a little cut clip icon right there. If you click on that, we split the clip. There's a clip here that lasts one second, and then there's a clip here that is the rest of my video. Well, now what I can do is I can right-click the piece that I don't want, and then delete it. So after, let me undo that to show one more time. After you move your playhead to where you want to split the clip, you can click the scissors, and you can right-click the piece you don't want, and you've got delete. And then you can press delete on the keyboard, or you can right click and delete. So then now there's that part that got deleted. You needed, you needed to right click the part you didn't want to delete. So remember to undo that. You're going to click the button to split it, then you're going to click the one you don't want, and then click Delete. So this then uh, split it, and what I have here is now, at the beginning, it didn't fully fix my issue because I've got one second of nothing, and then it starts. So there's a gap right here of nothing. How do you think we fix that? Pull it over, yeah. So just drag this back to the left so it starts at zero. So now the video starts at zero, and then I remove that one second of what I didn't want. So when you delete pieces of the video, there might be gaps, and those gaps will be empty. So um, I just moved the video back to the beginning to, to view it. Now we also have delete and close gap. I didn't show you that one right away, but I wanted to show you the difference. With a right, with a right click delete, whatever you've, you've, you know, you've split, you delete it, but then there's a gap. If I had shown you first instead right click and close gap, it would have done automatically what, what I wanted to do here. It deleted that piece and moved it back. So you see when I did the when I did a plain old delete, there's a gap, which then you have to move it back. Well, if you want to practice, undo that, and then right click it, delete, and close gap, it does both. So this is something you're going to use all the time to split the clip, remove the part. I made a mistake. Um, I want to split and then uh, delete the gap. 
but we'll work with this more in just a moment. Let's take our first break. Uh, let's Before that, let's go to File Save. Just save what you've done so far. And then we'll take a break. It's about 10.50. We'll take a break until 11. And then we'll go on. So are we saving a... <coughs> Are we saving the original thing we saved? Yes. Where is the um, PREL? Are we saving that again or are we saving just as a new? When you did save as, you saved your PRL file yeah. somewhere. And then when you do a save, it just continues to save your current work. So the original video is in, still in that along with the edited video? Yes. The edited video doesn't exist until you export it, technically, but here's what's on my flash drive. The original unedited video, the pro file with all of my changes and then other stuff. So it doesn't make the final edited version until we export it. It's not that you have two copies of it. It's that you have your original plus the edits, and then when we export, we'll get the other version. Okay. Okay. All right, so I need to take a quick break as well. We all need to take a break, so I'm going to lock the door. Your stuff will be safe here. We'll come back in 10 minutes, and then we'll go on. I'm sorry, are you just going to be covering video editing? Today? Yeah. Okay. Be back next week. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> 